Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment of Space This Week, the Monday series where we recap Starship development, launch news and more. We once again have so much to discuss, from the rapidly approaching Starship orbital flight test, the first ever Starlink mission deploying satellites to sun-synchronous orbit, a significant Falcon 9 milestone flight and much, much more. What a week it has been for Starship news, and the great news about it is that things are just getting started. Now, I know you all know this by now, but to just really, really, really briefly recap, Ship 20 and Booster 4 were originally planned to be the two vehicles to make the first Starship orbital flight test. But FAA delays, technological advancements in the Raptor engines, vehicle designs and Stage Zero, well that all led to SpaceX making the decision to scrap both vehicles and they've since been moved to the display area, or scrapyard if you're a glass half empty sort of person. <laughs> anyway, I guess what was somewhat surprising about the scrap of Flight 420 was that these vehicles were completely ready. All engines installed, all aero covers and thermal protection systems installed, it was just a surprise that SpaceX scrapped any and all plans to not even like test Ship 20 on a hypersonic flight test or anything, which at one point in time was going to be a possible mission for the late Ship 16. So, where am I going with all of this? Well, we've been following Ship 24 and Booster 7 for a good few months now, as these became the two vehicles that were going to come together to make the first orbital flight test. But always in the back of my mind, there was always a little feeling that maybe they won't, you know? Maybe that's just me. But over the last few weeks, so much has happened. The Starlink V2 loader was fitted to Ship 24. At first, I thought this was probably just a fit test, but the leading theory now is that at least one Starlink V2 satellite, or dummy payload of some kind, was indeed loaded into Ship 24's payload bay. Further to this, now SpaceX have added liveries to the ship, adorning it with the classic SpaceX X logo and displaying the name S24 on the side. We've never seen decals like this go on a Starship before, I guess unless you want to count the NASA Pathfinder vehicle, and I gotta say, it just looks awesome. Not long after the decals were added, Ship 24 was rolled out to the launch pad and placed alongside Booster 7, a move so significant that we got photos of it tweeted out by the official SpaceX Twitter page, and we got a couple of cool shots from Elon as well. I think this is it. We are now on final approach for orbit. I can't wait to continue following these two amazing vehicles over the next few weeks, and of course, their eventual destruction? Yeah, these aren't going to survive the flight. Even if everything succeeds, structurally, they're not expected to withstand the soft touchdown in the ocean. But they will leave one heck of a legacy behind. The Booster 7 static fire is going to be the next big thing to watch out for. I really like 3D Daniel's interpretation of what this might look like. Give him a follow on Twitter if you're not already. Over at the build site, the next booster in line, Booster 8, was fully stacked inside the Mega Bay. So SpaceX will hopefully be able to perform a second orbital flight test with the next booster and ship combo very soon after flight 24-7. While it may be all systems go down at Boca Chica, that doesn't mean that SpaceX are dawdling at the Cape Canaveral site. On the contrary, we are rapidly seeing the second starbase come together. Greg Scott and Fariel performed another helicopter flyover and caught some amazing images of how things are coming along. First off, the launch tower and Mechazilla. We can see sizable, identifiable components for both the catch arms and the carriage system that moves it up and down the launch tower. In the same vicinity as these components, we can see four pre-assembled components for the launch tower, which is rapidly taking shape at Launchpad 39A. Take a look at that, now three segments high and rising. On this overview image, we can see Hangar X, which is primarily for the storage and maintenance of Falcon 9, and presumably contains some office space as well. We can see the foundations of a new high bay materializing here, and the foundations of the Star Factory building are coming along too. Expect progress to be somewhat slow at first, while crews dig out all the conduits and run power and piping to the site, but once all that's done, we'll see the building spring up in no time. This animation by Sushi Fox Studios does a good job in showcasing what this is probably going to look like once all the buildings are in. Or up, I guess. <laughs> During the Starbase flyover, Greg caught this picture of Falcon 9 Booster 1073, which had returned to port after launching the SES-22 mission that I covered in last week's video. And last week, there was another Falcon 9 mission, Starlink Group 421. 
This was a pretty exciting launch actually. While the mission profile itself was fairly standard, a Falcon 9 launched 53 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit, what was very exciting here was that the first stage booster, Falcon 9 B1058, had previously launched and landed 12 times, making last week's Starlink launch only the second time ever that a Falcon 9 has flown 13 times. It was also the 100th Falcon 9 flight with a reflown booster as well, which was really cool. <laughs> Here's to flight number 14. After detaching from the upper stage, the booster safely made it down to the drone ship. Just read the instructions. Last Monday, I discussed the launch of NASA's Capstone mission atop a Rocket Lab Electron rocket. At the time, the vehicle was busy gradually performing the burns necessary to reach lunar orbit. And on the 4th of July, the Photon spacecraft successfully fired its Hypercurie engine for the final time, sending the Capstone satellite on a ballistic lunar transfer. There was a brief moment of panic after NASA unexpectedly lost communication with the satellite, but this was quickly restored and all was well again. The capstone is making use of a ballistic transfer, which is also known as a low energy transfer. Such a transfer requires far less energy to do than a more traditional Hohmann transfer, but it does come with a bit of a time penalty. It's going to take capstone about four months to reach lunar orbit. The planned orbit for the capstone mission will be the same as the orbit planned for the upcoming NASA Gateway Space Station. That's because the primary mission objective of capstone is to test and validate this calculated orbit. Check this out. NASA technicians can be seen here moving the engine section for the SLS rocket that will support Artemis 4. This is the first large piece manufactured for the Artemis 4 rocket and makes up the lowest portion of the 212 foot tall core stage. This section will house the four RS-25 engines and will be responsible for controlling and delivering fuel from the propellant tanks down to the engines. So it's a pretty important part and it's going to be supporting a very exciting mission. Artemis 4 will be the first ever flight of the bigger, badder SLS, the Block 1B, which differs from SLS Block 1, the rocket that we saw NASA roll out to the launch pad a few weeks ago, in that it'll have its interim cryogenic propulsion stage replaced with the bigger and more powerful exploration upper stage. The main objective of Artemis 4 will be assembly of the Gateway Space Station. The rocket will deliver the IHAB Habitat module, which was developed by the European Space Agency and the Japanese Space Agency. Last week, Russia launched a Soyuz. We don't have any footage of this, so here's some totally politically neutral archival footage. The rocket was launched from the Plasetska launch site, and on board was a single GLONASS K satellite, which is used for communications. It successfully deployed into medium Earth orbit. The final launch of the week that statistically has probably happened is the Starlink Group 3-1 mission. This was an exciting one. A Falcon 9 placed 46 Starlink satellites into sun-synchronous orbit, which is the very first time that SpaceX have flown a dedicated mission to place Starlink satellites in such an orbit. Now, all this comes with the big asterisk that it actually hasn't launched as I record this, but the ETA for liftoff is a couple of hours before this video goes live. So, I mean, it might have launched, but it also might not. I'll pin a comment below to let you know about this one. And hey, while you're down there checking it out, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like if you're enjoying these videos. It really helps support my channel and I always do appreciate it. Now, massive thanks are needed for the list of names scrolling on screen. These fine folk are my Patreon and channel members whose generous support allows me to continue making these videos for you. If you want to sign up, then you know how, but otherwise check out either of the two video suggestions on screen if they look interesting to you. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.